Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we begin our two-part study from Galatians chapter 3, verses 8 through 14, titled, Christ Was Cursed for Us. Before getting into the message, we like to share one of the letters we love. And the response has been interesting, as a lot of you have written to thank us for reading those letters. And there seems to be such a dearth in the world for sound Bible teaching that folks find it hard to find a good local Bible-believing church to attend, and they begin to feel like an island. Satan will also use that to tempt believers to compromise their convictions and turn to Laodicean churches for fellowship, which can be deadly spiritually. So folks out there find it nice to at least know they're not alone when they're alone. Now today's letter comes from Parts Unknown through the internet, sent by a sister Virginia, and she writes, Hello, my husband has been watching your videos for a while, and now I watch them. I find myself looking for new videos every day. When one shows up, my husband and I both will sit and watch them together. Thank you so much. And that's the end of Virginia's short little letter, but she uses exclamation points three of them, when she says, we watch them together. And we get letters like that on a regular basis, folks. One spouse begins watching, and then the other sits down to listen or watch in order to see what's so interesting. And the next thing you know, couples have open Bibles and are watching together. And that's what it's all about. Uh, thank you for writing to us, Virginia. And the thought that we bring couples together with an open Bible is just a blessing that's indescribable. And we're so thankful for those of you who write to us and share your testimony. And I hope you pastors out there are listening. People want to be taught the words of God. Yes, we provide illustration and we do teach. But the basis, the foundation for what's called a sermon should be verse by verse teaching of the Word of God. And then you have a topical here and there and a prophecy study here and there to help in the understanding of the Word of God and what's going on in our day. But if you'd like to write to us and you haven't already, please take time to write uh, and you can reach us at Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Uh, you can also send us a note by going to bbfohio.com and clicking the Contact Us button. And, um, or as demonstrated by this introduction, you can reach us by social media, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or um, other social media sites. We also get those messages. But I want to assure you that if you send your letter by P.O. Box or you send it by the bbfohio.com contact us button, if you email us at bbbfohio at yahoo.com, in those methods you have privacy assured. When I get that message, I'm the one who gets the messages first and then I relay them if they are intended for anyone else. So you have some assurance of privacy. Now the basic fundamental purpose of this ministry is to preach the cross to the lost and the empty tomb of Jesus Christ as God's gospel of salvation, the gospel of the grace of God, and then to take believers through books of the Bible, as I just mentioned, verse by verse, and in doing so to help them in their personal walk and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We want you to pray without ceasing and as you go along your day, at any point in the day, you can open your Bible and hear from God and you can understand what He's saying in the book as you read it. So we hope you'll stay with us, watching and listening to both parts of this message as we now begin part one of two in Galatians chapter three, verses eight through 14. And the message is titled, Christ was cursed for us. All right, we're in Galatians, and we're continuing our study in Galatians chapter 3. If you want to turn there, if you're not already there. And we've titled this message, this study, Christ Was Cursed for Us. And uh, this is something that I hope is a review for most of you and something that you meditate on in prayer many times and not just once a year like some folks seem to do with Easter. Um, but... Uh, Beginning in verse 8, if you're there, we're going to read through verse 14. And uh, we went in depth in verses 8 and 9 last uh, study, and, uh, but we want to pick up there for context. So let's go ahead and start. Verse 8, read it with me. 
And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. Now, uh, we have to understand the gravity of our situation before being saved. We say this over and over. A person can't be saved until they understand that they're lost. And that's just a very practical thing, and it's true. And we are born under the curse of sin. You need to understand that. You say, well, I have, I'm not a bad guy. I've done a lot of good works. Whatever you might say, you were born under the curse. Man in Adam was placed in a garden paradise, but given the choice to live or die, and that's where it all started. I want you to keep your finger there in uh, Galatians 3 and turn back to Genesis chapter 2. But people say, well, what do you mean? Babies are born under the curse? Yes. That's why babies die. That's why babies get sick. They are born into a cursed world and their bodies are as cursed as anyone else's. Now, uh, we don't, we're not going to get into this today, but we've taught on this before. And uh, we believe that babies are not Uh, held responsible for the curse and that if a baby dies they go into the arms of Jesus immediately. Every baby conceived that dies is in the arms of Jesus and that goes all the way up to the time that the child reaches the mental condition, the intellectual and spiritual condition in which they can know right and wrong and that they, they are sinning when they sin. And we've got a whole study on that uh, but just for reference, you, you, David, when his child died that he conceived in sin with Bathsheba, he said, I cannot go to, uh, he cannot come to me, but I can go to him. He knew his baby was in heaven. He knew he was going to see his baby again. And then there's uh, other references like Jonah, if you read that book. God spared Nineveh because not only there were animals that were innocent, but there were also, uh, I can't remember the number, there was a certain number of people, he said, that didn't know their right hand from their left. So he held them innocent. And uh, that's what, the way he looks at babies. It's with the knowledge of law comes responsibility for sin. And so we can't go linger on that. But this all started back in Genesis chapter 2. Now how many of you know that the Bible is true no matter what man says? Amen? Amen. And the Bible is true no matter what science says. Because a lot of what is called science today is science falsely so called. But did you know that science has confirmed that all of us came from one couple? Yes. Amen. All of us. Red and yellow, black and white, doesn't matter. You all had one father and mother. And it, by the way, it wasn't Adam and Eve, actually, it was Noah and his wife. But it all started with one couple in Adam and Eve. And so you go back in Genesis 2, in uh, verses 16 and 17, this is not fairy tale. This is an actual account of what happened. And it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou uh, mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now people like to ask, well, why did God even allow sin? Why did God even give them a choice? Because God is not a dictator in heaven in spite of what Calvinists teach. God presents every person 
with the possibility of life, and if you live to the point where you understand right from wrong, you now are responsible to make a choice whether or not to love God or reject God. And when he put Adam and Eve in the garden, if he had not given them any choice to disobey, that would have been called the prison of Eden. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But it's not called the prison of Eden. It's called the garden of Eden because they had the choice to disobey and leave at any time. Sadly, most of you I think know the story. That's what they chose to do. Over in uh, verses, uh, chapter 3 and verses 4 through 6, uh, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, nothing's changed, folks. When you disobey God and sin, it's always because you decide not to believe God's Word. God said, You shall surely die. The serpent says, Ye shall not surely die. By the way, how many of you know that at this point, the serpent isn't a snake slithering on the ground? All these movies, and, and the, the one, Tracy, I got to see that terrible movie that you told me not to bother watching, um, Noah. The one Noah. Terrible, terrible movie. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah. But one of the ridiculous things of many was that when they showed the perfect garden and the serpent comes to tempt them, the serpent is already slithering and, and shedding its skin. No, no. The Bible says that was the result of the sin that Eve and Adam committed and he cursed the serpent to remind us forever. Right. Yeah. That's what happened. So here's the serpent and this is probably a good looking dude. He's probably smooth operator. And, you know, and he says, you shall not surely die. <laughs> Something like that. Actually, you know what I think Satan sounds like? Ye shall not surely die. It's the hiss of the serpent. There's a reason why all the satanic religions have phallic symbols. I'm not, yeah. You look at all the satanic religions, they're awfully gay, as we would say today. Sodomite religions. Sodomite shrine prostitutes. Look at throughout history. All the satanic religions have their sodomite. What do you think priests are in the Roman Catholic Church? Yeah. Mass majority of them, they admit it, folks. I'm not making this up. They admit it. They're, they've turned that whole priesthood into a sodomite priesthood. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Didn't think you'd hear that this morning. All right, let's get on. Verse 5. Read that with me. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And by the way, I know some good Roman Catholic priests who are straight as an arrow, and they'll tell you what I just told you is true. Yeah. They're not all sodomites, but it's bad. Yeah. So God says, the day that ye eat this, everything changes. And Satan says, oh yeah, it'll change, but it'll be for the better. See that? How many people have left their spouse for a, another because they thought it was going to be better? Yeah. God says it's sin. God says it's going to, it's, it'll kill your life. And Satan says, oh no, 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 no. That woman will be much better for you. That man will be much better to you. That's, Satan's always off. It, nothing's changed, folks. No. Every time Satan tempts you, he'll want you to disobey the Word and he'll, the grass is always greener. You know why? Because there's more manure over there. <laughs> Amen. Hey, when you look over there, the grass is greener until you step over there and then you're like, oh, what did I step in? Too late, you're already over there. Amen. Alright. Verse 6. Read that with me. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Boy, there's women. Mm. They always get you in trouble, won't they? Hey, the book of Proverbs is filled with, with 
talk about how dumb men are by following the, the honey dripping off the lips of a flattering woman. Yeah. yeah. Right. Most of the time, uh, men are, yeah, I mean, just that's just what you, you experience. You open your eyes. Men, men, they just fall into it. But a good woman, there ain't nothing better. I got me one. But a bad woman, there ain't nothing worse. Behind every evil man is usually a really, really evil woman. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Just look through history. And uh, here you have, oh, Hillary. Here you have Adam is the, the leader, supposedly, but he's following Eve into sin, and they chose to follow the serpent rather than to follow God. And folks, every time we sin, me included, every time we sin, yeah. we're choosing to follow the serpent yeah. rather than God. And that's what started it all. Now jump down to verses 16, 19. Verse 16, for starters. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, I had somebody say, well, that means that only women who have babies uh, receive the, that curse. No. As a matter of fact, it begins with puberty. And then you end up in that, uh, what do they call that? Uh, change. They're going through the change. Some of the women I've seen go through that, it's been horrible. And I'm not looking at any woman right now in this building. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, I've seen it. It's bad. And then you take the, the ladies who can't have children, and they, they then have issues with depression and all that. Hey, listen, let's just keep it real, folks. All women have suffered yeah. the result of that curse. Amen. All of them. Yep. And there have been women who never did start their... Uh, period, their menstrual cycle, and they suffered other things directly as a result of this. It, it's all women. You say, well, what about the men? Well, look at verse 19. Uh, we could read more, but it sums it up here in the verse 19. It says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now you take a man who has a good woman, but he's still got to work. He's got to pay all these huge taxes. He's got to keep the house up. He's got to keep the cars running. He, he's looked to to be the one to make sure these things are taken care of. And if not, it just means more trouble for him. And so ever since this, there's also been the battle of the sexes. And the feminist movement came around, you know, in the 60s and 70s and said, we don't want to just take the curse given to us with childbearing. We want the man's curse too. <laughs> That's what feminism is. The feminist, amen, the feminist movement is, you know, well, it's not enough for me to have the babies and go through the menstrual thing and all that. We want it all. I want to have to work. I want to have to get up and go. And I can feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah, you've accomplished killing yourself. <laughs> women used to outlive their husbands, and now that's changed, and the women are dropping dead heart attacks in their 50s. Yeah, the ones that come out of that generation, the, the, the numbers are flip-flopping now. It's just, that's what happens. You know, God has a plan, folks. Now, let me say this. I, I don't, some of you, what's he saying? I'm not saying it's a sin to work outside of the home. Book of Proverbs, you go to the virtuous woman. She, yeah. she had work and she made money. The thing is that women have too often wanted to usurp the headship and the leadership in the home. Yeah. And there's the problem. Yeah. And they'll want to even work more hours than they should to have more stuff. And they'll give up and, and you know, it's one thing to not be able to have kids. But then there's a, a lot of people in our, our, our generation and, and previous generation, my, my parents' generation, who didn't have kids so that the woman could continue to work so they could have more stuff. Now they're lonely. And if their spouse died, they're all alone because they don't have any kids, no family, by choice. Yeah. And so that's what we're looking at. All that starts right here, folks. 
All that starts right here. But right in the middle of all this is a prophecy. Purposely, purposely skipped over verse 15 to come back to. See verse 15? Read that with me. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, how many of you really paid attention to that prophecy before? Yeah. That's the prophecy of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. The seed of the woman. No man involved. Amen. Virgin birth. Amen. And Jesus is that seed. Let's go back to Galatians now. Galatians 3. We're going to skip down to verses 15 and 16. Where we already read. Now verse 15 and 16. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. That's talking about the law. Now read verse 16 with me. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. One seed. Christ is the seed that is the fulfillment of that promise, that prophecy back in Genesis chapter 3. People, listen to me. No other book on the planet has this kind of thing in it. No book. Koran, the Gita's, the Book of Mormon. It doesn't matter what book you're talking about. No book has this in it and can confirm that it is a historic fact that by the time Moses put the Torah together, that prophecy was in there, and a couple thousand years later, up comes the seed in Jesus Christ. Amen. Meditate on that. The history of Israel, and we're going to have a study and go through this sometime, the history of Israel is the history of the seed. You, you think those ge genealogies are boring. What you ought to realize is, that those genealogies are historically documenting the seed from Adam to Jesus. And you'll see some of these genealogies are given like this, the offspring of Esau, the, the Dukes of Edom in Genesis. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you don't, you might, I think they, they mention them again in one of the Chronicles. But they, they, they stop. Why? Because Jesus didn't come from that seed. It's no longer of interest. That's right. Amen. But the, the genealogies pick up with... Uh, you know, they go from Adam all the way up to Noah. And then from Noah through Shem. Japheth and, and Ham drop off and you see Shem's line all the way up through uh, uh, Seth and then to Abraham. And then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Esau drops off. And then Jacob's uh, 12 sons. And then it goes through and then there's a special emphasis put on Judah. Because from Judah would be the tribe the Messiah would come from. The lion of the tribe of Judah. And so then Jesus appears and you read in Matthew, Joseph's, his uh, adopted father, Joseph's lineage. And you go over to Luke and you see Mary's lineage proving that through his father, Jesus had the legal claim to the throne of David, and then you see through Mary in Luke's genealogy that he has the bloodline in him. Amen. And he is that seed. All the way from creation to the birth of Jesus Christ in the manger. Interesting and that's what the whole story of the Old Testament is. It's a, it's, it, there's also, you can call it the, the bloodline or the, the trail of blood or the thread of blood. Yes all the way through the Old Testament. Now the history of man is the history of sin. See, man loves to tell history like, ooh, the human spirit. And man has done so much and accomplished so much. And just, uh, you know, and that's how you, you watch these programs. They just lift them up and they, they, they cover up the lies. I mean, you name the hero and I'll tell you the lies they've covered up. Because when I started studying history, I got the propaganda. And so all of our heroes are such wonderful people. And then you find out they're not so wonderful. As a matter of fact, what you'll find if you 
take your blinders off and really study them, that it proves that only Jesus deserves the glory. Hallelujah. No other man. Praise the Lord. And it's been a history of sin. I used to think that you, he brought up Rockefeller earlier. I used to think, well, the, the, the you know, Rockefeller, the first one was all right, and then the family went downhill. <laughs> Whoa, you find out that Rockefeller, he claimed to be a Baptist. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, he claimed to be a Baptist, and that man, he just slaughtered people that worked for him so that he could make money. Yeah. Same thing with Carnegie. The yeah. same thing with all these Vanderbilt. All these people. Just people were nothing but cattle to them. That's right. And that's man. That's the history of man. And no man has ever kept the law. All are guilty. We are all under the curse. I had some guy tell me one time, he said, well, I think my grandma, my grandma, that woman, she was a saint. I didn't say much, but I just told him, I said, I don't care who, nobody's kept the law, but you know what? If that woman wasn't saved and all her sin under the blood, grandson's going to have a real surprise on Judgment Day. Because if you are not saved, you're going to stand at that great white throne and everything's going to come out. Grandson ain't going to be saying that about grandma no more. And if grandma is at the right judgment, grandma's going to look at grandson and say, mm-mm, it was, I wasn't all that. Glory to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 10 in, in Galatians 3. Verse 10. Read that with me. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now stop there. That, that's it. Before you are saved by the blood of Jesus, you are accountable and responsible for keeping the law. And see, we're going to see later, I'm not going to jump in too deep because we're going to go through this again a little bit later, but the law was not there to save you. It was to basically show you your need and say, you can't do it. But until you turn to Christ for salvation, you're held accountable to keep it. And that's why if you won't get saved by the blood of Jesus, you're going to stand at a judgment and be judged by the law. And you, you're without hope. It's, you're done. You better receive the blood of Jesus and the payment that Jesus provided you when you still have the chance because it's appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. Now's the time to be saved. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. Better get saved now. Keep putting it off. Keep putting it off. You're under the curse. Sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Even little sins and things you do, if you just think them through, you'll find out they're related to the law. I mean, you know, uh, even little things like little white lies, well, you sh it's still bearing false witness. Uh, you, you make a bad choice and maybe you didn't purposely kill somebody, but you can make bad choices and it end up costing someone their life or at least injuring them. That concludes part one of our study of Galatians chapter 3 verses 8 through 14 titled, Christ was cursed for us. Be sure to watch or listen to part two as well as the entire expository study of the epistle of Paul to the Galatians by going to bbfohio.com. I am Pastor Greg. I thank you for listening. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.